Hi guys, uh, Scott Woodward with you to talk about the Gold Coast Titans in 2013 and look, just before we go through the, the teams um, and the individual players and the likely run on 13 that I think you'll see in round one, uh, I just wanted to uh, remind you if you want to get the free ebook, the free download for both NRL and ARL, just um, go to the URL down below, the domain name and click on it and um, you can download it free of charge. It's, it's must reading, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, look, the Gold Coast, uh, last year, disappointing year, they didn't make uh, the finals again, second year in a row, finishing 11th, and um, uh, they lost nine of their first 11 games uh, in 2012, and they will probably be struggling to improve upon that. Just have a little look at the coach. Uh, look, I, I've never been a fan of John Cart Cartwright, uh, seems like a great guy. Everybody tells me he is a great guy, but um, he's got a great manager. How he signed a five-year contract with the Titans is beyond my comprehension. Last year, um, he had 24 games. They won 10, 42% strike rate. His total strike rate is 46% since he's been at the Titans, uh, since they started in 2007. And given the quality of the list that they've had and the fact that they had a world-class organiser, uh, that's just not good enough. Uh, they certainly should have done a lot better. And look, I talk about their uh, class organiser, uh, as in uh, Scotty Prince, and they incredibly have let him walk. They let him walk, uh, and they also let Bo Champion walk. Two guys that I thought were going to be key in 2013 for them, and it's one of the reasons why I give them a shot at big odds. The bookmakers say they have no chance. I actually gave them a good chance with those two guys in the side. But uh, I think they're going to struggle now. I think their only hope is if they can find a halfback. And uh, they've got quite a few options. And uh, let's have a look at the team and talk about some of those options. Firstly, um, I think Will, Z Will Z one of the reasons why I thought they had a good chance this year is because two of their spine players really stepped up last year. Will Zillman was one. He's a lot better than I thought he was. He went to a new notch last year. I know he's been uh, struggling with a lot of injuries and he shook them off late last year and we saw the real talent that he's got and one of the reasons why he signed a long-term contract with the Titans. They obviously knew how good he was and uh, he was highly impressive. If, if he comes back in the trials anywhere near that form, he has to hold down that fullback spot. Uh, despite the fact they've imported Matt Russell from the UK, very fast guy, can, can also play on the wing, but the Titans are very well placed in that area on the wings. So look, Will, Will Zillman was one of the reasons um, why I liked him. Uh, Aidan Caesar was the other reason. He was fantastic as he slotted into their trouble number six position last year. And I think he will be second receiver again, although I expect him to call the shots from second receiver, a little bit like what Jonathan Thurston does for the Cowboys, and I think he'll alternate between six and seven. Um, and we're going to talk, I think there's four or five guys who can play that seven role, and um, we're going to talk about that and the combination that, that whoever the coach settles on, um, he will have to have a great combination with Aiden Caesar, otherwise the Gold Coast Tigers aren't going anywhere despite their list. Let's have a quick look at their wings. Uh, Kevin Gordon and uh, David Mead, both two absolute fly machines and very young guys, but got a quite a bit of experience now in first grade. Uh, they pick themselves, and while they have got mistakes in them and they can be suspect in defence, they are genuine wingers and got genuine speed. If they get the ball in clear space, it's good night, nurse. Uh, so they're very well served there. Jamal Idris, I think with Bo Champion going, may move over to right centre now. He's more comfortable on the right. He played left last year, uh, and I think you'll see a fit at Jamal Idris, and I expect him to have a big impact this year. Uh, look, I think he's uh, start of origin quality, although he was missing out of the Indigenous game, uh, which suggests that um, uh, he may not be favoured uh, by Laurie Daly. Uh, so time will tell, but I certainly think his state of origin quality, Jamal Idris, when he's fit <clears throat> and when he's in form, he's just absolutely devastating. Uh, with with Bo Champion going, it opens up uh, the other centre position, uh, and normally when that happens uh, during the course of the season, the coach falls back onto Steve Michaels, um, who has served him reasonably well, but Steve Michaels is just an ordinary player, very much an ordinary player, got no idea in defence. And, and can make some errors at really bad times. And I think in this day and age, a team has to have gun centres. So, look, he may go with Steve Michaels. Uh, they've just picked up the very late inclusion of a guy that I've got a lot of time for uh, from the Roosters, Brad Takarangi. 
Now, the reason why the Roosters let him go is because his defence wasn't good enough, but he was certainly in their top three attacking guys um, in the Roosters, and he's got enormous ability to replay and offload. Uh, he's very, very difficult to contain, and he's not slow. Uh, and I can see him holding down that left uh, centre position. If, if, if he goes OK in the trials, I, I, I can see him holding down that, simply because the forwards have got so much depth, and I can't see him getting uh, a spot in the forwards unless they're going to play him off the bench. But I think they can transform him into a centre, and he would create an enormous problems um, there, um, holding the ball up and getting it away to a flying uh, Kevin Gordon or Will Zuman coming through. I can see him being very dangerous, and that would give uh, the Titans two very dangerous centres. Big call by the coach what he does there. I don't think they're going to go anywhere with Steve Michaels. Aidan Caesar um, is their most valuable player now without uh, Scotty Prince, and he needs to go up a notch now. He needs to take control, and he needs to be the on-field general. I haven't seen that in him, but he's very promising, and he may be able to go that to that level. He's certainly got skills. He's a good talker, uh, a reasonably good organiser, and a handy tactical kicker, although not a superstar tackle, tactical kicker. So I do need to see some improvement in, in, in Caesar, but I'm not saying that that's not going to happen. The contentious halfback spot uh, will decide how the, how the Titans go for the year, without a doubt. Albert Kelly has been ripping them up in trials, and he's an individualist with brilliant speed off the mark, and uh, he looks like he will start as halfback for the Titans. Now, what they need is whoever's going to complement Caesar in that position. Uh, whether or not it can be Kelly, I don't know. I think he'll start. Um, I have a high regard for young Jamie Dowling. I think uh, he'll be in contention, and it could also be in contention uh, for the hooking role off the bench, although I think Matt Schrummer is an 80-minute hooker. And I, I don't say that about many hookers these days uh, with the speed of the game. But uh, Jamie Dowling is very promising. Uh, Matt Bido, Kane um, Elgie, Jordan Rankin and Bo Henry. They're all the guys who are in contention for the halfback spot. So I'm not quite sure who will end up in that position during the course of the year. Albert Kelly will start. So it, it's going to be crucial. Really looking forward to see what the coach does there. Let's go to the forwards, and it's a wonderful forward pack. It's a very, very mobile, athletic forward pack, and it's a big thing that the Gold Coast Titans have got for them. They always make good metres because of the athleticism in this forward pack. But let me say, uh, it doesn't scare any, any team. It's not a feed forward pack. Uh, they've got some big names in the forward pack. Uh, Ash Harrison, Dave Taylor gives them a bit of size, which they've been lacking in previous years. Um, I can only see Mark Minicello coming off the bench now. Uh, Greg Bird will, will be obviously, obviously one of the starting back rowers. Uh, and I, I think the starting props will be uh, Luke Bailey. And I think they'll probably start with Nate Miles, although Nate Miles may start in the second row. Uh, and push up and replace Luke Douglas after 20 minutes or something like that. Not quite sure what they're going to do with that configuration, but um, it's a very, very talented forward pack, although they do lack grunt. They do lack um, somebody who's got big size and will hurt. Uh, and I, I, Look, I don't see Dave Taylor, despite the fact he has the size. Um, if, if you had Greg Bird in Dave Taylor's body, that would be the type of player that the Gold Coast need. But uh, it's a pack that's, that's um, going to do very well, but they're not going to run out of the, over the top of any, any of the big teams, I don't think. Uh, off the bench, uh, very promising Ben Ridge uh, will be one of the guys that will come in after 20 minutes, and also Ryan James, outstanding prospect. We saw him in the Indigenous game, uh, and he just keeps getting better every year. This could be his breakout year for Ryan James. Got a high regard for him. Luke O'Dwyer, unheralded. No one ever says much about him, but every time he comes on, he makes an impact, and you, you can't ask any more than Guy of the Bench that does that. Uh, I think he's a terrific club man, Luke Dwyer. Uh, the other guys that we'll see plenty of, Matt White always makes good yards when he comes on. Always a terrific guy to have on the bench. Uh, one of the new ins from the Raiders, uh, Mark Ione. There's a regard for him. Um, we haven't seen much of him. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does this year under the new banner. And um, Luke Page and Cody Nelson are guys that I'm hearing good things about for the Titans that uh, you could see come on and do something on the bench. So look, um, I, um, what else did I want to say um, that I could help you with? Um, the Titans, as I said, they finished the year terribly last year, um, just like they started the year terribly, and, th and they picked up some, some ground uh, midway through the competition. Uh, I can't say whether they, they'll start good or finish good because I just need to see how that six and seven are going to go. Um, when, when, you, when you have a, a club that loses, um, your on-field general in, in Scott Prince, who, who was a, a, a genuine leader 
in the side. That's a massive hole, and I have a high regard for Bo Champion, and we're going to talk about South Sydney um, on another tape, but um, him coming into South Sydney solves one of their problems. He's a very good defensive centre and a very good talker and got good speed off the mark and a good hole runner, and he'll be sorely missed. So um, that's two massive outs for the Titans, uh, and I can't see too many massive ins that they've got that um, are going to fill those holes. Uh, remains to be seen on the upside. If Brad Takaranji happens to make it in the centres, um, and um, they happen to find a halfback, I think the Gold Coast Titans are quite capable of playing semi-final football. But I suspect that um, Alba Kelly, despite the fact he's elusive, and I'm sure he'll make a lot of breaks, I think they will struggle with organisation, and I think they're going to struggle in that centre position um, and, and uh, let in a lot of um, uh, missed tackles and make a lot of injuries. It's not an intelligent side, or certainly hasn't been an intelligent side in previous years, the Gold Coast Titans. And when you don't have a big forward pack, you can't afford to make a lot of mistakes. So ideally, I think the Gold Coast Titans will struggle to make the eight, but I haven't completely written them off because there's a couple of boxes that I need to be ticked. And if they get ticked, um, they're in this competition uh, right up to their arm sleeves. And I hope so because they're a team that I like watching the way that they, they throw the ball around and play. And so don't give up. If you're a Titans fan, you may have a better year than what you might think. Good luck.